What's the word, y'all? Now, I'll be honest with you, I know I say this pretty much every offseason. But this one right here could be legendary. And I'll, and I'll try to convince you of the case because I said this a little while ago to the homies. And they, they were like, who's in this free agent class? We ain't got no Kevin Durant. So we ain't LeBron is not a free agent. We not going to see no super duper star switch team through free agency. But we could see some crazy things happen through trades. We have, again, we have free agency, which again, there's, there's no big names, super big names out there, but we could see some really, really good players switch teams. We have a bunch of high level coaching vacancies out there and a bunch of high level coaches out there interviewing for them. We got the NBA draft, which every single year brings a bunch of drama. And then we got these new rules in basketball that haven't gone under the radar for everybody. If you're a super NBA nerd, you understand the, the NBA salary cap apron, the second one that was just put in play with the new CBA, but all of these things can make for a ridiculous offseason. I'll explain why. After I tell you that the Enjoy Basketball Icy Collaboration is live for sale right now, hit the link in the description. Growing up, Icy was something that I had pretty much as often as I could. So to be here with my own brand, collaborating with them is a dream come true. So we got this basketball that I, I don't know if you would want to take it to the court or you just want to use it as a set piece, which is what I'm going to do. Either way, this ball is perfect. We also got the Slurpee Slushy Cups, which is dope. I even bought a slushy machine because I'm like, if I'm going to play the part i'm gonna play the part we got the hoodies i'm wearing the hoodie and the t the t-shirt under the hoodie like i'm geeked right now you know what i'm saying i might not take this off for a couple days but it's a huge back piece that has a polar bear with the enjoy stuff again these things are on sale right now and it is very very limited so i, I appreciate everybody that's been interested get in while you can um i, I want to say thank you to all of y'all because if it wasn't for y'all selling out um, and our first, second, and third drop, Icy Brand would have had no interest in collaborating with us. So if y'all show love, man, it can open up so many doors for not just the Enjoy brand, but just in general. Um, so I appreciate all the support throughout the years. Um, and this, again, this stuff is so very cool to me. Oh, if you do buy something, hit me up on Twitter and Instagram with a screenshot. Please blank out your address because I don't want to dash you. But I do want to show my love to the people that are also showing love to the brand. So hit me up. All right, where do we start? Where do, where do we start when I when I try to convince you that this offseason is about to be crazy? Maybe we start at the, at the individual teams that I'm the most interested in come offseason. The first one being the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, we talked about them a little bit yesterday in this potential offseason, so I won't go too deep into it. LeBron James, before I recorded, or after I recorded that video, threatened to potentially retire, which changes a little bit of things, but I've seen a lot of people speculating that that was more a ploy to kind of get them to go completely in at his age 39 year next year. I don't know what's going on in that man's head, so is he actually thinking about retirement or not? I don't know. But this could be an interesting offseason for them, regardless of whether he, he retires or not, because they only have Anthony Davis, LeBron James, Max Christie, Jim Vanderbilt under contract right now. Even LeBron James knows that in his postgame interview. So he's thinking about what the next iteration of this team looks like. I know they might be interested in some one of the top players in this free agency class. I don't know what it looks like. But right now you got four guaranteed contracts and the opportunity to flip the roster again which is kind of a LeBron James thing where we we have a couple players that we in love with, but everybody else, y'all can be gone so we can put in the right pieces here. So I'm excited about what they do. Number two on this list is, is the Philadelphia 76ers slash Houston Rockets because right now they attach like this. Where it's like every single day I'm getting a new update about this potential um, anonymous general manager or scout saying that, that James Harden going back to Houston is set in stone already is a guarantee in the Charles Barkley voice. So if he's gone guaranteed, and in this, this hypothetical that is a guarantee, the 76ers get nothing. This is not a sign and trade opportunity because why do the Houston Rockets want to help Daryl Morey after what happened between them? Why do they want to send out some assets to, to the 76 to make them a little bit better? They don't have to do that. So if James Harden walks completely, what's next for the 76ers? I should have low-key opened up with this team, the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers have one of the most intriguing off-seasons ahead of them. Obviously... They were bad this season, and they, they leaned into the tank, ended up with the fifth best odds for the NBA lottery, ended up jumping all the way up to number three. But number three is not Victor Wimbyama, and they said if they aren't getting Victor Wimbyama, or speculated that if they weren't getting Victor Wimbyama, they would be interested in trading that pick and Anthony Simons and whatever to try to bring in some people that can help Dame right now. And when all of this went down, there's a lot of conversations on Twitter about maybe the Portland Trailblazers should accept the reality of Damian Lillard this, not doing it, this and this and this. That's not so relevant to me. I am just excited to see... If you are trading three and Anthony Simons or three by itself or Anthony Simons by himself, 
what is the move that you can convince your fan base is the right move for Damian Lillard to get into contention. Again, I've said many times on this channel over the last year or so, I will not come here and say trade Dame because if Dame don't want to get traded and the front office don't want to trade Dame, I'm screaming into a void if I say trade Dame. So I've accepted the fact that Damian Lillard is going to be a trailblazer until he decides that he doesn't want to be anymore. E e even if keeping three and potentially moving Dame might be a good, a good thing to do if you want to hit the reset button. But again, that's not what they're thinking right now. So I'm not here to try to make them do it because what, what say do I have? But in the 2K mode, like if, if, if I was going to do something on 2K, the idea of trading Damian Lillard and keeping three is super intriguing, especially if at number two, Brandon Miller goes and now I'm getting to school Henderson. Again, I, I don't really know. What makes it even tougher that like, like if they decide, if the Trailblazers decide, okay, Dame, we love you for the last decade plus, you've been the best player in franchise history between you and Clyde, it's who cares. Uh, we're going to send you to your next team. We appreciate all these years. Look around the league. As good as Damian Lillard is, and he would be better than a lot, and he's be the best, one of the best point guards in basketball behind Steph Curry, um, a lot of teams right now probably feel pretty confident in who their point guard is at the moment. And I'm not saying that these teams wouldn't appreciate Dame's services, but I'm just saying for what the Trailblazers would potentially want, a lot of the teams that you would want to send Dame to so he could compete for a championship aren't really in the conversation for Dame. Like the 76ers would be interested, but right now they don't really have assets for Dame. So it's like, if we are going to trade Dame, what is the location? Show, show me the team that has the assets that would they be willing to give up, but also be still good enough where they can convince themselves that Dame is the missing piece. Because there are a lot of teams that have assets, but you'll be putting Dame in a very similar situation to where he's at. So that's what makes it really tough. And again, I don't I don't envy the people in charge over there, uh, but, but we'll see very, very soon where their head is at when it comes to that pick. And depending on what they do with it and depending on who comes out at number three, whether it is Brandon Miller or School Henderson, we could look back on that trade of five years and say, this team absolutely won it and this team absolutely lost it. I don't know. And another big team in this is, is the Boston Celtics, especially, especially if they end up losing this series. I should have mentioned this at the top of the show. Celtics fans, I know you won tonight, which is dope for y'all. I, I'm not going to be here breaking down the series again until you win game five. Now, if you win game five and you make it a 3-2 series, then we can start talking about y'all being the first team in NBA history to come back to 0-3. But I'm not lo looking at this one game and dissecting this one game when you just lost the last three. The reality of the situation is, for the first time in this entire series, you shot the ball like you normally do. That's the reality of the situation. You hit a lot of shots, the Miami Heat didn't. Sometimes it's that simple. Now, can you replicate that again and then again and then again? To become the best team, the first team to ever do it? Maybe. But until we get close to it, I'm not about to sit here and dissect it because what I had to say is all I had to say. But back to the offseason, if they do end up losing here and Jalen Brown is made an All-NBA second team and he's super max eligible, he can make potentially $300 million. Jason Tatum can make potentially make $300 million. Do you want to tie $600 million to two singular players? And I, I, again... The lesser is Jordan and Pip that's guaranteeing you six of them things, $600 million a lot. And even Jordan and Pip, Pip was making pennies, pennies on the dollar. So $600 million is just a lot of money, especially if you have this team. And even though he's 26 and the other one is 24 and they got a lot of room to grow and potentially grow together, it hasn't been able to raise the Larry O'Brien trophy yet. So if, if they end up flaming out and Jalen Brown has his mindset on a different organization... He could be one of the best players move this offseason. And those are just the teams that I think have a lot going on from this offseason. I ain't even mentioned the Phoenix Suns having Chris Paul, DeAndre Aiden, and potentially maybe moving on to, from one or two of those people. I mean, we, we got teams on a, a on a lesser scale that have a lot of assists to make, like the Dallas Mavericks, like the Chicago Bulls. Like the, These are teams that we don't see as championship contenders, but they have pieces and stuff that can maybe get moved, that can shake up the NBA. So that, that's why I'm saying that this offseason has the opportunity to, to be one of them ones. Where we look back on the rosters from this year and compare it to this next up and coming season, you're like, dang, a, a lot of things have changed. And personally, I love change. I love my whole gaming channel is about people switching rosters. I, I built the name on YouTube around that. You know what I'm saying? I love when it happens, um, especially when you see a move that impacts the team so much that it is the missing piece for them to win a championship or something like that. That's what we're here for. 
So you let me know what you think. What is the most important decision your favorite team has to make? Go ahead and enjoy some icy, enjoy basketball merch and stuff and let me know what you think. And I'll see y'all tomorrow.